Hello everyone, welcome back to PTech Chemistry channel. My name is Dr. On and in this tutorial video, I'll be doing some tests for gases, namely hydrogen gas, carbon dioxide gas, as well as oxygen gas. In the context of acids, bases, and salt, that's the current topic that we are doing uh, for these 14 to 16 years old, all level, IGCSE level or GCSE level chemistry. Uh, you know that metal plus uh, water will give you hydrogen gas as well as metal hydroxide. However, reactive metals like sodium and potassium reacts very violently with water. It's not advisable to do that in school. So instead what I'm going to show you is another way to produce hydrogen gas in the school laboratory and that is to react metal with water. Sorry, metal with uh, acid, metal with acid. So I have some magnesium metal here. This is magnesium powder. It looks a bit grayish solid. I can scoop it out and um, let you have a look. So I scoop up some magnesium solid. It's kind of a gray solid. So this test tube is dry. So magnesium solid will, will, will is a metal, it's got metallic bonding. It will react with an acid. So the, the typical acid used in the school laboratory, HCl, hydrochloric acid, will give you chloride salt, which is Cl minus. Sulfuric acid, H2SO4, will give you sulfate salt, which is SO42 minus. Uh, salt and then nitric acid HNO3 will give you nitrate salt which contain NO3 minus. What I'm going to do is we're going to test the hydrogen gas that's produced by using a lighted splint. So I'm just going to move this a bit to this side. So we turned we turned the air hole off first so that we could see the flame that we're producing. Oh dear! Oh dear! Oh dear! Ah, uh, this is a bit tough. Okay, I'm just going to try that again. So there is orange flame at the moment. We don't typically use this at all. So we have to turn it into blue flame. And what I've got here is I've got some wooden splinter. So these are wooden splint. So we use wooden splint. So what you see here is this one has got the fire going. This is called a lighted splint or a burning splint. A burning or a lighted splint. So let the fire go out. This one where it's got the flicker, but there's no more flame going on. This one has got the flicker. Uh, that is what you call a glowing splint. So just now, this is burning or this is lighted or burning splint. So let the flame go out. You're left with the flicker. So this thing is called glowing, G-L-O-W-I-N-G, whereas previously it was burning or lighted. We're testing for hydrogen gas, and to test for hydrogen gas, we need a burning or a lighted split. So I'm going to generate some hydrogen gas. I'm just going to use sulfuric acid, so H2SO4. H2SO4 plus magnesium metal. Observe what happened. So you get effervescence. So the effervescence is a result of gas being produced. So I use a burning spleen. Okay, so I hope that was quite clear. You heard a pop sound with the burning spleen, but the effervescence is still going on because the gas is still being produced. And as the magnesium reacts, it will form magnesium sulfate, which is uh, okay enough in solutions. Well, not really that soluble, which is why you get like a white, uh, white precipitate, white suspension coming out. But if I use magnesium nitrate, if I produce magnesium nitrate, so there will be things like nitric acid plus magnesium. So nitric acid plus magnesium. So I'm going to scoop up my, my magnesium. Okay, and this is nitric acid. I don't know what happened there, but anyway. So you can see the effervescence. Effervescence means rapid bubbling. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use a burning splint. So I produce magnesium nitrate here. All magnesium nitrates, all nitrates are soluble. This is burning splint. So this is hydrogen being collected in here. And that doesn't, that wasn't that spectacular. Uh, perhaps I should try again with the sulfuric acid or maybe hydrochloric acid. I don't know, maybe the acid wasn't uh, acidic enough or there just wasn't enough hydrogen being produced. So I've tried this with sulfuric acid again. So I could, feel, I could feel that the reaction is exothermic. So the temperature feels hot there. Okay, but it is collecting a gas inside there. You could see the bubbling. I've just used my hand to track the gas. Um, 
I'm just going to, you know, I should really, really do this with a, with a, with a test tube holder. So what I'm going to do is, I have a burning splint. Oops, I have a burning splint. Now the burning splint put into the test tube. And you might just have heard it. There was like a sound, okay? So that sound, the pop sound that you get when hydrogen burns in oxygen. So the hydrogen that get produced burns in oxygen. So hydrogen is flammable. Oxygen is not flammable. And what you get is you get a pop sound. And then the hydrogen burns in oxygen to give you water, which obviously extinguishes the burning split. That was the test for, that was the test for hydrogen gas with a burning or a lighter split. It burns with a pop sound. Okay. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna use uh, I'm gonna use a metal carbonate to react to produce an acid. So a metal carbonate that we use is this calcium carbonate, Ca2 plus Co3 two minus, such that I get calcium carbonate CaCO3. So I'm just gonna scoop in. So it's a it's a solid with a giant ionic structure, Ca2 plus and CO3 to minus, it's a solid. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna try and collect the gas because we're gonna test carbon dioxide with lime water. So as I seal this up with a rubber bunk, the gas that get produced will be in here. And then I'm gonna bubble this gas into lime water. So bubble the gas into lime water. That is the test for carbon dioxide. Lime water, lime water is a saturated solution, so it is a solution of calcium hydroxide, but it's saturated, so you dissolve as much of calcium hydroxide as possible in this lime water. Calcium hydroxide on its own is not very soluble in water, that's why we need a saturated solution. It's the maximum amount of the solute that can dissolve in that um, solvent. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to put this in here, so all the way in there, so that the gas that bubble out from this reaction will bubble into the lime water. I'm just going to put it there. Oops, okay. And while it is sitting there on the, on the rack, hopefully I can zoom that in and make you see that a bit clearer. Probably not. And let's see if you can see that a bit clearer okay I think you can see that now no no okay cool I'm just gonna add in the acid into this conical flask and what you will see is I'm just gonna add in some dilute sulfuric acid so there is a lot of gas being produced and you see that you see that that bubble okay so the lime water the lime water, okay, it's got a bit dark, but that's because the, the, the tube itself is a bit dusty. But what is very clear is that the gas turns lime water milky. The gas turns lime water chalky as well. So you get like white precipitate forming in that solution. That's because calcium carbonate reacts with acid to give you salt as well as to give you carbon dioxide gas. I'm just going to pour some lime water into the clear beaker and hopefully that is a bit better. So the beaker contains this thing here. So it is still bubbling in the gas, as you can see. I think the reaction has stopped. There's, there's not much bubbling anymore. So there is still bubbling. And what you can see is this solution is slowly getting um, cloudy. Uh, not really, no. Let me try and add in some more acid, perhaps. But what is very clear is the saturated solution of calcium hydroxide. The calcium hydroxide reacts with carbon dioxide and you get this cloudy precipitate, the cloudy solid of calcium carbonate. All the group two carbonates are insoluble in water and that is why you get this thing here and this thing here. So technically speaking, we started off from calcium carbonate, which is insoluble in water. All the group two carbonates are insoluble in water. But we reacted this with acid and we produced carbon dioxide gas. And we are passing the carbon dioxide gas into lime water. And lime water is saturated solution of calcium hydroxide. You can write an equation for calcium hydroxide plus carbon dioxide. The hydroxide itself is alkaline, uh, but then you also have the acidic 
solution, uh, acidic gas, which is carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide, CO2, plus calcium hydroxide, Ca bracket OH twice, because it's Ca2 plus OH minus, you're going to produce calcium carbonate, CaCO3. That's the insoluble white precipitate that you are getting, the milky, chalky white precipitate, plus H2O, which of course you already have present in your solution. That is the balance in question there. So the formation of the white precipitate is a result of lime water, saturated calcium hydroxide solutions, plus your carbon dioxide, giving you calcium carbonate and water, which is a sort of a, a acid-base reaction, where your acidic solution comes from the CO2, which is an acidic oxide, and then you got lime water, which is calcium hydroxide. It contains hydroxide, which is your OH minus ions there. So after testing for carbon dioxide, the last test for gas is I'm going to show you will be the hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is H2O2. So that can decompose naturally to H2O and O2. But what I'm going to show you is H2O2 being catalyzed uh, by MnO2 to decompose uh, much, much faster. So what I have, I don't really have, mm, I need to reuse my running tube here, doesn't matter. So hydrogen peroxide comes as a solution, so it comes in various concentrations, so I'm going to use that much. Alright, so uh, I'm just going to do it once, I guess. There has got fire going. I'm going to add in this MnO2, manganese 4 oxide, Mn4 plus O2 minus MnO2 formula. Disgusting black color solid, but it's a compound of transition metal. Transition metal is the middle block in the periodic table. Whether the transition metal is served or the compound of transition metals, they make really good catalyst. I just need a small amount because catalyst is not it's involved in the reaction, but it is not used up in the reaction. You will see that there's a lot of rapid bubbling now because there's a lot of gas being produced. Mm. Let me try again. Oh yeah, it's much spectacular now. I hope you catch that. Okay, I think once it's done, you probably need to redo it again. Let me just try it again. Now I'm gonna do some hydrogen peroxide. So hydrogen peroxide in here. And then I'm just gonna add in some MnO2. I'm just gonna swirl it a little bit so that there's a lot of oxygen gas being produced. Okay, so the H2O2 decomposes to H2O and O2 gas. Of course, you need to balance the equation as with any questions you do, this is Bur this is not burning. This is no longer burning or, or uh, lighted. This was burning. This is burning or lighted. And then the flame go away. This is now glowing. There's oxygen gas being produced in here. As you could see, the glowing spleen relights and it continue lighting up. That's because oxygen support combustion. Oxygen support combustion but oxygen itself is not flammable. Okay, I'm glad that worked out well. Uh, we're just gonna go back and summarize the whole thing. So three tests for gases here. Metal plus acid give you metal salt and hydrogen gas. Sodium, uh, metal, you know, is quite reactive. We don't, we don't deal with that. Um, actually, let's try that again. Metal plus acid give you metal salt and hydrogen gas. We tested hydrogen gas with a burning or a lighter split. Uh, it will burn with a pop sound, as you've seen earlier. When we produce carbon dioxide, we get it from metal carbonate plus acid giving us metal salt and then carbon dioxide and water. We bubble the gas through lime water. Lime water is a saturated solution of calcium hydroxide. That thing plus carbon dioxide will give you a chalky, a white precipitate, milky, chalky, white precipitate, insoluble in water because it's a calcium carbonate. And that is your observation for the presence of carbon dioxide. Last but not least, uh, we were generating the oxygen gas from hydrogen peroxide. The H2O2 decomposes to H2O and O2, 
balance your equation obviously and then the O2 itself is tested with a glowing splint meaning the flame is no longer around just the flicker and then the glowing splint will relight it will rekindle it spark back into fire into flame because oxygen supports combustion there thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next experimental tutorial video or some other lecture tutorial video uh, don't forget to click the button on the bottom right to subscribe to my channel follow me at ptet.chemistry on facebook instagram twitter and telegram to get connected